In this tutorial, we are going to cover Logic Pro X's interface and learn how it's laid out and what each area does. In-depth familiarity with Logic's interface will mean increased productivity when recording, composing and arranging and make following later tutorials much easier. Let's start by launching Logic Pro X from the dock. Now what happens after launching Logic Pro X will depend on your currently selected startup action, which we'll learn how to configure in a later tutorial, but most likely it will launch this window here, which is called the Project Chooser, with a selection of templates ready for you to choose from, or it's going to launch your most recent project. If you get the Project Chooser, select the Hip Hop template and then click Choose. As you can see, it launches a project with a number of tracks already created for us and is made up of software instruments, including a drum kit, some synths and a string ensemble. However, the first time you launch Logic Pro X, it actually uses a stripped back interface designed more to mimic GarageBand rather than provide the professional features we want to be using throughout this video tutorial series. So the first thing we want to do is enable the advanced tools. To do this, click Logic Pro X up in the menu bar choose Preferences, and then Advanced Tools from the drop-down menu. Then just click the checkbox next to Show Advanced Tools. This will quickly refresh Logic's interface, and not only do we get additional features, it also removes the wood finish sidebars found in the basic mode. And as you can see in our Advanced Tools Preference window, we get the ability to add additional options, but for now, we're gonna leave it as it is and close this window now, what we see as Logic Pro X taking up the whole screen in a single window is actually called the Logic Pro main window. In order to maximize our screen real estate, I like to hide my dock by clicking the Apple icon in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, choosing Dock, and then Turn Hiding On. Note you can also use the shortcut key, Command Option D, to hide and show the dock. With it hidden, just tap the green jewel icon in the upper left to have Logic fill the entire screen. Alternatively, we can use Logic in full screen mode by clicking the full screen icon in the upper right of the main window. This hides the menu bar, but if we mouse over the very top, it will reveal it. To exit this view, we can either press escape on the keyboard or mouse over to reveal the menu bar at the top and click the exit full screen mode icon. This is the view I personally use because I like to have my menu bar displayed at all times without having to mouse over it. Now, as we haven't recorded anything, our project looks very bare. To get more of an idea of what a professional project might look like, we can actually load the Foster the People demo project that comes with Logic Pro X. To do this, simply click Help in the menu bar, and then Logic Pro Demo Project. Then click Close, and I'm gonna click Don't Save as I never made any changes to this project. Now the largest part of Logic Pro's main window is the Tracks area, and this is where you record, arrange, and edit the audio regions that make up your project. Audio regions are laid out horizontally from left to right, and if I get my project playing back, you'll notice the playhead, which is this white line with a triangular top, moves from left to right. We can click anywhere along this ruler to have our playhead jump to a certain location, and it can also be dragged to reposition it. We can use the vertical and horizontal zoom sliders in the upper right of the tracks area to zoom in and out on our audio regions, as well as use the shortcut keys, command left and right arrow to zoom in or out horizontally, and command up and down arrow to zoom in vertically. Each track is stacked vertically with each row representing a track and its audio regions. As you can see in this demo project, we actually have three different track types that make up a song. We can see by the waveforms that lead vocals A, B and distorted guitar represent audio tracks that have been recorded into Logic Pro X. If we look at the backing vocal stack track, you will see in the audio region multiple rows of stacked lines. And if we look at the track header to the left here, you'll notice a disclosure triangle next to our track icon. If we click this, it reveals the contents of the folder which actually contains multiple tracks. 
We can hide them by clicking the Disclosure Triangle again. If we come down to our Synth Stack Track and click the Disclosure Triangle, you'll notice that a Stack Track can actually contain audio and MIDI regions within it, so you can mix multiple audio types. Our final audio region type, which we can see on the Bass Cut-Up Track, is graphically represented by blocks of MIDI data, and these tracks are what's known as software instruments inside of Logic Pro X. Now to the left of our tracks area, we have the track header controls, which allow us to name each track by double-clicking on the title, as well as access things like mute and solo on a track-by-track -track basis. If I drag this out a little bit, I can reveal my volume slider for each track, which can be clicked to drag the output volume. We can also configure what's visible in the track header control area by right-clicking on a track, then selecting Track Header Components, and for example, I could turn on Show Pan and Send. If they aren't revealed for you, you might just need to drag out your Track Header Control window a little bit. If I start clicking the Track Headers to select different tracks, you'll notice that the area on the left changes. This part of Logic Pro's interface is called the Inspector, and it lets you view and edit the parameters associated with a certain track. At the very top of the Inspector, if we click our question mark icon in the control bar, you'll notice we get access to the Quick Help area, and this can be shown and hidden using the Disclosure Triangle. This is a really neat feature for users new to Logic Pro X, as it offers help as you move your mouse over different areas. For example, if I mouse over the track name, it tells us we can double-click to rename a track. If I mouse over the H button, it tells us that this is the Hide button and explains how it works. This is great if you're not sure what a certain button does. Below Quick Help is the Region Inspector, and we can show this by clicking the Disclosure Triangle, and this will change to reflect your currently selected audio region. If I click Bass Cut Up, for example, this audio region here in the Tracks area, you can see that it updates, and it shows me information about the quantization which I can change from here, as well as transpose or add swing. I'm going to pass over the groups and track inspectors because we're going to cover these in a later tutorial. In the lower part of the inspector, we get two channel strips. The channel on the left adjusts the selected audio track, and the one on the right adjusts the master output channel. Above our volume slider and pan control, we can view our audio effect slots, which currently have plugins inserted. We can also browse through and change these here, as well as click one to open up the editor window. Running across the top of Logic Pro's main window is the control bar, and you'll notice that on the left of the control bar, the inspector button is already highlighted in light blue. If I click this, it's going to hide the inspector, and it's grayed out again. Let's open the inspector once more, and let's also click on the Library button to reveal the library which contains all of our instrument and audio patches and presets, as well as the Toolbar button, which reveals additional edit buttons along the top here. These are grouped above the left region of Logic's interface as they directly affect the area of the screen below them. If we look at the next grouping of buttons in the control bar, you'll notice that one is already selected, and this is the Smart Controls button, which opens the Smart Controls at the bottom of Logic Pro's main window. In effect, Smart Controls allow you to quickly modify properties of the currently selected patch, and you can see that it will change if I start clicking through my different track types, depending on the track selected and the plugin or patches inserted on that particular track. If we go back up to the control bar, next to the Smart Controls button, we can display the mixer or the editors in its place. But unlike our inspector and library, we can only display one in the lower region of Logic Pro X at a time, or we can click it again to deselect it entirely. Next in the control bar, we have our transport controls that allow us to go to the beginning of the project, play from selection, Rewind and Fast Forward, Stop, go to the start of the project, Play, Pause, as well as Record. In the middle area of the control bar is the LCD, which allows us to view our current playhead position in bars, beats, and bar divisions.
as well as set our tempo by BPM, as well as our key signature and time signature. Next to the LCD, we can enter our low latency mode, enable cycle or loop, auto punch, replace, solo, or turn our metronome on and off. But we're gonna look at these in much greater detail later on. In the far right of the control bar, we can reveal our right region interface elements, starting with the list editors button. And what this allows you to do is browse all the elements contained within your project, and it can be used to make precise edits using numeric values. Next along, we have the notepads button, and this allows you to make notes on the entire project or on individual tracks under the track area. This is ideal for collaborative sessions or reminding yourself where you left off on a particular project. Next, we have the Apple Loops browser button, which allows us to search for and preview our Apple Loops and drag them out into our project. Finally, in the upper right, we have the browser button, and this allows us to view all the elements in our current project we can access audio elements stored in our iTunes library, as well as our hard drive and external drive. Well, that is Logic Pro X's interface, and we're going to delve into how you actually use all these tools in later tutorials. But once you understand how Logic Pro X is laid out, it's not as complex as it looks, and is incredibly powerful and easy to use. Remember, anything we didn't cover here will be featured later on. So now that we have a good understanding of how the interface is laid out, let's get into the really cool stuff.